Hello everybody, today we will discuss that uh, different thermodynamic relations for the single component system. So, in this case uh, we have already explained the first law of thermodynamics and what we can utilize at constant pressure Q equal to delta E plus W. So, delta is the, the internal energy and W is the mechanical work done. Now, first of all we will try to establish the specific heat at constant volume. Now, we know that dQ total heat transfer to the system equal to dE internal energy into PdV work. So, at constant volume definitely dV will be 0. So, therefore, total heat supply to the system is equal to basically change of the internal energy delta E V. So, the V suffix here indicates that uh, I sorry V subscript that actually indicates the amount of the total uh, internal energy store at constant volume. Now, C V is defined as that energy supply delta Q by delta T at constant volume is basically equivalent to the delta E by delta T. So, from here we can see this is the representation of the specific heat at constant volume. Now, specific heat at constant volume we already explained that this is the expression for the specific heat at constant volume uh, sorry uh, the total energy balance with a particular system. Now, H equal to enthalpy of the system it is a consist of the internal energy part plus P dV. Now, if you make the differentiation of H, so d H is equivalent to d E internal energy and d into P V d of P V. So, d E plus P dV plus V d P and then d E plus P d V this is equivalent to the d Q and V d P this is the uh, total expression and from here you can find out d Q equal to is basically d H minus V d P. So, once you get that now at constant pressure what is the heat supply? So, d Q at constant pressure is basically d P will be 0 and then it is equivalent to the d H. So, therefore, Q P that means at constant pressure is basically delta H. Now, we can define that at constant pressure the heat supplied is basically change of the enthalpy at constant pressure therefore, specific heat delta Q by delta T at constant pressure was equivalent to delta H by delta T at constant pressure. These are the expression for the uh, specific heat uh, at constant volume and specific heat as constant pressure. So, this will be useful uh, in further calculation or understanding of the different thermodynamic relations associated with the single component system. Now, assume that the phase change of a single component by changing the temperature at the fixed pressure. So, we assume that at fixed pressure whatever changes happening from for a single component system with respect to temperature and we are considering that. Therefore, for single component we understand it is a pure element or one type of the molecule that does not dissociate over that particular range of the temperature. Then we can say it is existence of this particular pure element and a, uh, uh, as a single component system. So, single component system uh, this is the specific heat delta H by delta T at constant pressure this is the expression for the specific heat. Now, graphically how this changes with respect to temperature all these parameters or changes. For example, specific heat changes it is a purely if you see with respect to temperature it is changing in this filer nonlinear fashion. So, basically with increasing the temperature the specific heat actually increases and if you look into the enthalpy with respect to in, uh, temperature there is a change this is also gradually increasing enthalpy, but we can count is a above 0 value enthalpy will be 0 at 0 uh, at 290 Kelvin or 300 Kelvin or, or near about that Kelvin as enthalpy equal to 0 and before below that temperature it is the less than 0. Now, this is the change of the enthalpy, but we count the change of the specific heat exactly from the 0 value. Now, specific heat becomes 0 value at 298 Kelvin, we are assuming that at this particular temperature specific heat value is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, not here specific heat that enthalpy equal to 0 at 298 Kelvin. Now, if we look into the entropy also, it is gradually increasing 
and also it follows the nonlinear curve and it is at starting from the 0 value at temperature T 0 Kelvin and entropy is gradually increasing. So, all these parameter specific heat enthalpy and entropy is basically of increasing order with respect to the temperature. Now, here you can see that enthalpy so, specific heat at constant pressure is basically delta H by delta T. This actually indicates del H by del T is basically the slope, slope of this particular curve because here x axis equivalent to the uh, temperature and y axis equivalent to the enthalpy. So, that slope at any point if we, if we draw the slope um, a tangent of this particular point that actually indicates the slope of this curve and that is equivalent to the specific heat in a enthalpy versus temperature curve. So, this information we can utilize this particular information to further calculation or you can see the what kind of the other relationship exists for a single component system. So, first that at constant pressure specific heat this is the expression C p equal to del H by del T at constant pressure, but slope of the curve H enthalpy and temperature actually represents the specific heat C p. So, therefore, H can be so del H from here we can see that H can be represent the uh, integration of del d H is basically that uh, C p into del T. So, reference temperature is basically we are assuming here 298 Kelvin to T on particular raise the temperature at a particular temperature T. So, that is integration of the C p d T this indicates the calculation of the uh, enthalpy. Simple performing the integration we can perform the enthalpy calculation, but from classical thermodynamics we can find out this particular relation C p by T equal to del S by del T at constant pressure P, but how are you getting this relation? Just d H d E plus d into P B. So, d E plus P d V plus V d P that we have already seen this kind of expression. So, d E plus P d V is basically equivalent to the d cube and V d P. Uh, we know this thing. Now, C p expression for C p equal to this or equivalent to del Q by del T at constant pressure basically energy supplied to the system at constant pressure the del Q and this delta D is a change of temperature. Now, in a ideal situation or ideal process d s change of entropy equal to d q by t. So, d q is the heat supply to the system at temperature t. So, therefore, d s equal to d q by t we can utilize this expression. So, basically d q equal to t d s this expression we can utilize here and d q at constant pressure equal to uh, d h. So, here how it is coming because here d h so, d h equal to V d p. So, d h if you put pressure as a constant. So, this term will be 0 is basically d q and d q at constant pressure. So, therefore, d q at constant pressure is equivalent to d h the change of enthalpy of the system and d h is equivalent to C p into del delta t. So, from here uh, with the definition of the C p from here uh, we can get that C d h equal to C p into delta t d q this thing and d q equal to t d s using this we can find out that d s by d q d s by d q 1 by t and d q we can put it c p delta t d s c p d t equal to One by t. So therefore, from here we can find out that d s by d t equal to C p by t. We use this relation, and here we can find out C p by t equal to del s by del t at constant pressure. So that is the expression. That is the thermodynamic relation we can easily find out from here. But entropy starts at the at uh, zero value at zero Kelvin. So therefore, s expression for S just we perform the integration this uh, uh, equation. So, S equal to then C p by t into d t integration of that starting the reference point it starts from the 0. Now, uh, we can uh, we can uh, easily find out 
uh, this kind of the thermodynamic relationship in case of the single component system. Which further calculation because all this calculation our objective is to estimate what is the values of the Gibbs free energy to understand the equilibrium situation conditions uh, in case of a um, alloy system or pure component. Therefore, once we understand the typical curve of the enthalpy versus temperature and typical curve entro entropy versus T temperature, then using this information the trend using this particular trend with response to the temperature, we can find out the Gibbs free energy expression G equal to H minus T s. So, here H and T s. So, here H is the enthalpy. So, we can easily draw the enthalpy curve because the similar way enthalpy uh, can be this kind of the curve we can draw this color this figure this is the enthalpy curve H, but then we can draw the T into S, T S and then here if we follow the such that G will be like this. So, Gibbs free energy gradually decreasing with respect to the uh, temperature. So, gradually decreasing with respect to that means G's values is uh, reaching uh, uh, temperature increases, G value is overall decreases with increasing the temperature. But at any point, if you make this line, so this actually indicates the difference actually indicates H and this indicates T s such that H minus T s is representing the uh, value of the G. So, at this point the G is this value, but this is amount of the T into S and this is the value of the H. So, this is H and this distance is T s and this actually indicates the value of the G. So, that is why this is the typical nature of the G curve that means Gibbs free energy curve with reference to the temperature and if you see here the x axis is the temperature, y axis H positive and negative direction it is the G. So, this typical variation of the G with temperature is very important to understand because what way we can analyze the stability of the different solid phase liquid phase and definitely all are as a function of the temperature. So, we already know that uh, the enthalpy curve enthalpy versus temperature curve at any point the slope actually slope is equivalent to the specific heat at constant pressure C p, but on the G curve the slope can be calculated as the minus s. We can see the same this calculation that on the G curve how to estimate the slope. This d g we know d g here d h minus d of t s that means change of the Gibbs free energy change of the enthalpy and differentiation of the t into s. So, that d g equal to d h. So, d h is at constant pressure d h equivalent to d cube at p we have already seen the d h is enthalpy change of enthalpy is the d q at constant pressure just the last previous slide we have shown this. Now, d t s equal to d t into s minus t into d s. So, therefore, d g equal to d q p minus d t into s and t d s uh, t d s also representing in the d q uh, uh, d q at constant pressure because uh, we remember the d s equal to d q by t. So, therefore, d q equal to t into d s last slide also we have seen this expression. So, we put it this t d s equal to d q into p. So, this balances. So, it is getting minus s d t and then from s d t to d g by d t equal to minus s. So, d g by d t is basically thus indicates the slope of this curve on this g curve. So, g curve the slope actually represented by minus s that means values of the entropy but negative sign we have to put it then we can we can represent the this typical g curve. So, once we understand that the variation of the enthalpy and variation of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the temperature we can go ahead the understanding of the other kind of the phenomena just to focusing on the changing of the Gibbs free energy curve. Now, from here we can find out that classical thermodynamics when the temperature and pressure both are varying because so far we are discussing that temperature is varying, but all discussion was that uh, we are maintaining at constant atmospheric pressure, but if there is a variation when temperature and pressure both are varying in that case this is the expression of the G Gibbs free energy H minus T s. So, we can make the differentiation of that. So, d h equal d g equal to d h minus 
S D T minus T D S. So, here also you can see that uh, D H minus um, T D S, D H minus T D S is equivalent to actually V D P that we can see here also D S equal to D Q by T and D Q equal to T D S and from change of the amplitude H equal to E plus P V from there D H equal to D plus D of P V. So, D E plus P D V plus V D P. So, from here we can find out that D E plus uh, P D V that is equivalent to the D Q and one that is equal D Q and V D P. Now, D H equal to D Q plus V D P. So, D Q again D Q equal to uh, T D S we put it D Q T D S and V D P is there. So, therefore, D H minus T D S equal to V D P that we have written here D H minus T D S equal to V D P V D P minus S D T. Now, at constant pressure with constant pressure the V D P term will be 0. So, therefore, D G equal to constant pressure in that case D G equal to this term will be minus S D T. So, from here also we can say that D G by D T equal to minus S. So, different way also we can we can prove that the slope of the G curve uh, that is the that is the measure of the slope is the measure of the minus of entropy that is the uh, slope that indicates the slope of the G curve G versus temperature. Now, here you can observe the trend of this curve is that that with increasing temperature there is a G value actually decreasing, but uh, that things and we can say like that with decreasing G by increasing the temperature and the rate that means the since indicates the slope minus s the rate is basically what way it is decreasing the rate can be represented the by the slope and that is equivalent to the minus s. So, this way we can calculate uh, the we can represent the we can analyze the Gibbs free energy curve uh, associated with the single component system. Now, further uh, ahead of the uh, single component system the different phases for a single component system. Here we have tried to explain that if there is a variation of the H and G similar kind of the curve that H and G curve, but a different phases. For example, the variation of the solid and the liquid phases of the metal, what the typical nature of the G and H curve. So, enthalpy curve we can see that similar nature is there, we can start from this point because and uh, that is for the solid phase. So, this dot uh, solid line it indicates the, the curve for the solid phase H curve. So, it is gradually increasing with respect to temperature and G curve also gradually decreasing with respect to the temperature uh, for a solid phase. And similarly, in liquid phase also we can start, but the starting point are different in these two cases, two different phases. Liquid phase indicates the dotted line. So, this is also increasing with respect to the temperature and G curve also decreasing with respect to temperature, but how they are different between the two different phases. So, here if you observe carefully this particular uh, nature of the curve for the liquid and the solid phases. So, at any temperature all temperature that definitely the enthalpy of the solid is lower than that of the enthalpy of the liquid. So, we mean to say that enthalpy of the liquid is much more as compared to the solid because heat content in case of the liquid phase is much more that is compared to the solid. And other way if we see that uh, at low temperature that means temperature below the melting point temperature that G L the Gibbs free energy for the liquid phase is more as compared to the solid phase. I mean to say that if Gibbs free energy in the liquid phase is more uh, below the melting point temperature and in that case the the Gibbs free energy for the solid phase is less. It means that solid phase is more stable than the liquid phase below the melting point temperature. And other way beyond the melting point temperature we can observe that the Gibbs free energy for the solid phase uh, li sorry liquid phase Gibbs free energy for the liquid phase continuation of the liquid phase is much lower as compared to the solid phase. It means to say that above melting point temperature liquid phase is more stable than the solid phase. So, this kind of the information we can find out uh, from the G curve then we give free energy curve and what other information, but liquid has the higher S than the solid phase. Here you can see that 
uh, liquid phase is having the higher entropy than the uh, solid phase and that we can observe this with reference to the slope of that because uh, the liquid the slope is for the liquid phase is much more and as compared to the solid phase. So, there is a drastic that means change is more, much more rapid in case of the solid phase in I am talking about the Gibbs energy curve as compared to the uh, uh, sorry uh, slope change of the slope for the liquid phase is much more for Gibbs energy as compared to the uh, solid phase. So, therefore, G for the liquid phase decreases more rapidly uh, with respect to the temperature when temperature increases as compared to the solid phase. So, other inferences from this particular graph we can explain also that one is that up to the melting point temperature the solid phase has the lowest G. So, therefore, it is more stable phase or more stable equilibrium phase, but above the melting point temperature the liquid phase is equilibrium and that is obvious from the nature of the G curve. Second is that at melting point temperature both the phases has the same G value we can see that that when exactly at the melting point temperature this is the G value for the liquid and solid phase is same. So, therefore, we can say that both phases are the same G. So, solid and liquid exist in equilibrium and therefore, that indicates that this is the transformation point from one phase to another, another phase. Now, if we look critically in the graph therefore, a b small a b indicates that a b. So, here a and b this is the rise of the enthalpy with increasing the temperature. So, rise of the enthalpy at a rate rate in the sense that that indicates the slope of this curve is c p that is why we are telling the rise of enthalpy at a rate of the c p and that is that is that is for the uh, solid phase. But a e indicates the a e uh, a indicates the decrease of the Gibbs free energy from between the A and E point. So, between A and E point the it indicates there is a decrease of the uh, Gibbs free energy. Now, at T m the heat supplied will not rise the temperature T since it will be used for supplying the latent heat of the melting. Here you can see that enthalpy uh, at particular temperature T m there is a enthalpy changing of the phase from solid phase to liquid phase, but in that case enthalpy is increasing uh, and that is enthalpy is utilized just to change the phase and that is equivalent to the latent heat of the to change the phase, but there is no increment of the temperature at this particular point. So, okay. now at melting point temperature specific heat is infinite since addition of the heat does not increase the temperature. So, since specific heat is infinite in the sense that it is not increasing the temperature when at melting point temperature because it is accounted only the change of the phase by absorbing the latent heat of melting. So, that is why we are telling the specific heat is infinite at this particular point because there is no increment of the temperature. So, but when all the solids transforms into the liquid therefore, H of the system follow the C D. So, once the solid transform in the liquid the enthalpy can be represented by uh, this line C D. So, that means the existence of the liquid phase only this is therefore, enthalpy increment follow this particular curve not the curve associated with the solid phase because this already changed the phase. Now, and overall G decreases along the E F we can see that same times when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase uh, or solid phase to liquid phase. In that case we can see that at this particular point it is following the G curve will be following the liquid phase and then because liquid phase is more stable and the it is actually lower than that of the uh, curve for the solid phase. So, this is the curve for the solid phase. So, G in this case solid phase and this is the curve for the G liquid phase but here definitely it will be following the liquid phase curve. So, it is lower than the G solid phase curve. So, that means further decreasing the Gibbs free energy. So, it means that uh, once you cross the melting point temperature that means solid is transformed to the uh, liquid then it becomes more stable and that is that is indicated by the low amount of the Gibbs free energy curve this Gibbs free energy. So, therefore, overall we can see the for single component system 
at very high temperature if it is further changes from liquid phase to the gaseous phase then Gibbs energy will further reduce and then gaseous phase will be more stable at very high temperature than because of the uh, as compared to the liquid phase. Similarly, if the solid phase can exist and the different crystal structure and that is normally for the allotropic or polymorphic form of the, the same material but existent of the uh, different types of the structure. So, in that case the free energy curve will be different. Yesterday uh, we, or last class we have discussed that even FCC iron and BCC iron although both are material is the same, but their crystal structure are different. So, therefore, we can consider these are the two different phases. So, therefore, their free energy curve will be different, but what can be that how we can indicate the transition point the from one phase to another point uh, phase the similar way what we can explain that the transition between the liquid phase to the solid phase and there will be the equilibrium at, at, the, at the transition point. Uh, similar way we can explain if there is a change of the uh, even within the solid phase if change the allotropic form from one structure to another structure it will follow the similar kind of the analogy uh, like solid phase between solid and liquid phases. So, therefore, free energy curve will intersect at a particular temperature and that actually indicates the equilibrium temperature for the allotropic transformation. So, equilibrium temperature between this two different phases. We can give an example also at atmospheric pressure the iron has BCC ferrite of course and below the 910 degree centigrade, but FCC austenite is existence above the 910 degree centigrade. So, 910 degree the transition point. So, therefore, at this particular point both phases exist in equilibrium condition. So, these are the influences associated with the, the Gibbs free energy curve and of course, to some extent uh, we plotted the H curve also because Gibbs free energy uh, constitute both the takes the values of the H also state of the temperature and of course, at the entropy of the, uh, of the um, entropy of the, of the system. So, that is how we plotted in that way. Now, we try to understand single component system when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to uh, solid phase that means during the solidification how you can interpret the change of the Gibbs free energy. For example, the difference in the free energy between the two phases away from the equilibrium temperature is very important. So, here schematically we can see that for the sake of understanding we can consider this as a linear curve, but actually it is not linear curve it can be the two non-linear curve here we have considered. So, this is the Gibbs free energy for the liquid phase and this is the Gibbs free energy for the solid phase. So, this follow the solid phase and this is the liquid phase. Now, at this particular point when that equilibrium point, so here the is the melting point temperature. So, uh, this side uh, melting point temperature and so therefore, this definitely existence of this the solid phase and liquid phase. Uh, uh, in this case. Now, what is the driving force the Gibbs free energy change we can calculate the delta G actually calculate we can calculate. For example, we know the liquid metal is undercooled by the delta T below the T m. So, this is the melting point temperature and we understand the driving force for the homogeneous nucleation process is the uh, degree of undercooling associated with this particular system. Now, degree of undercooling we can estimate how it is deviate from the melting point temperature. For example, this is the temperature difference at the particular temperature difference and this can be represented as the uh, uh, this delta T. So, as much as possible it can go beyond the uh, below the melting point temperature and that is the measure of the degree of undercooling. So, if it is the at a distance particular temperature T, so T m minus T is basically degree of undercooling and at this degree of undercooling what is the change difference of the Gibbs free energy at this point because at this point Gibbs free energy delta change Gibbs free energy will be the same for the liquid and the solid phase, but below certain temperature here the this indicates the, the difference indicate the Gibbs free energy change delta G. So, therefore, solidification will occur with the decrease in the free energy. So, delta G what is the amount of the decrease of the Gibbs free energy and associated with the particular degree of undercooling. So, so here degree of undercooling is the, the deviated from the melting point temperature what is the values of delta T and corresponding what is the values of the delta, the delta G that means change of the Gibbs free energy that actually provides the driving force for the solidification process. 
so we will discuss further also. Therefore, the free energy at a particular temperature T for the liquid and solid phase we can simply say like that we know the G equal to H minus T S. So, therefore, G L equal to H minus T S L, but the temperature at temperature T. Now, similarly G S the solid phase the here also G S equal to H S minus T into S S that means this is the values of the solid phase and this is the values of the liquid phase. Now, at temperature T what is the differences of the Gibbs free energy. So, delta G equal to delta H minus T d s that means we can see the difference the liquid minus solid is such that this delta H equal to H L minus H S and delta S equal to S L minus S S. So, that is the difference of the entropy and difference of the enthalpy and that is the indicated by the delta G. So, this is the common expression for the change of the Gibbs free energy at a particular temperature T is the delta H change of enthalpy minus a T into delta S. So, difference of the entropy. Now, at equilibrium melting temperature T m. So, at melting temperature T m the free energies of the solid and liquid phase will be the same equal. So, therefore, change of the Gibbs free energy will be 0 in that sense mathematically it should be 0. So, when delta G equal to 0 we can say the delta G equal to 0. So, delta H minus T m delta S equal to 0. So, from there, but here T m means at T equal to T m temperature T equal to T m delta G equal to 0 because Gibbs energy for the solid and liquid phase both are same. So, once you do that from here we can estimate the delta S equal to delta H by T m. Now, at melting point temperature what is the change of enthalpy that is equivalent to the latent heat to change of the phase one particular temp thus the at melting point temperature. So, therefore, we can say that delta S equal to L by T m sometimes the delta S is also known as the entropy of fusion. So, this way at melting point temperature we can estimate the delta S the entropy of, entropy of fusion that is equivalent to the L by T m melting point temperature of the pure substances. Now, experimentally it was observed delta S is actually more approximately equivalent to the values of R for most of the metals, R is the characteristic gas constant. So, therefore, because metals with the high bond strength and they are can be expected to have very high value of the both L and T m. So, roughly you can estimate delta S equal to R. Now, if we assume that small undercooling, so delta T it is not very high. So, delta T is almost close to 0, I mean to say that at a temperature very close to mel melting point temperature the differences in the specific heat, heat of the solid and liquid phase will not be much. So, or we can ignore the differences therefore, C p l liquid phase minus C p s that is very close to 0 and in that sense because since these are very close to 0 that means the difference almost close. So, therefore, delta H change of enthalpy and entropy we can assuming the approximately assume that it is the independent of the temperature. So, once we make is the independent of the temperature. So, therefore, delta G can be calculated the delta H minus T delta S and delta H is the equivalent to the very close to because delta is very delta T uh, um, close to 0 it means the temperature close to melting point temperature therefore, we can assume that delta H change of enthalpy is equivalent to the latent heat L. Now, T particular temperature T and delta S we have already calculated delta S is basically at particular temperature it is uh, close to the melting point temperature it is the L by delta T. So, latent heat of fusion uh, sorry entropy of fusion. So, here delta S is the L by T m. So, from here approximately you can estimate L to T m minus T by T m. So, T m minus T equal to basically delta T. So, L into delta D by T m. So, therefore, delta G change of the Gibbs free energy is approximately equal to L into delta T that means latent heat depends on the latent heat, degree of undercooling and melting point temperature or uh, melting point temperature. So, therefore, but this is valid if the degree of undercooling is very small, very close to melting point temperature there we can use this particular expression for the change of the entropy. So, here what we calculated first we calculated delta S the entropy of fusion uh, roughly estimated L by T m. So, here delta S equal to L by T m and then other cases we have estimated that 
that delta G equal to L delta T M delta T by T M. So, degree of undercooling is uh, here accounted. So, that means when we analyze the uh, mechanism for the nucleation formation always we try to link the in case of in any type of the nucleation mechanism we try to express in terms of the degree of undercooling. So, here is the importance and all this parameter calculation comes what a we can relate the change of the Gibbs free energy when there is a nucleation will start or nucleation start in a any kind of the solidification process. Now, we try to look into that binary solution uh, one once we discuss about the uh, this uh, single component system then if it is a binary solution then what way we can explain the express the different change of the Gibbs free energy or what can be the expression for the Gibbs free energy function. So, here single component system uh, we assume the all phases have the same composition. So, therefore, there is no change in the composition of the system for a single component system and equilibrium involves pressure and temperature as variable. So, for that discussion, so first we have discussion if at constant pressure then we discuss that at if both are variable temperature and pressure are variable what can be the expression uh, in case of the uh, what kind of the thermodynamic relationship exist in case of the single component system. But when you try to look into the alloy. So, here apart from the temperature and pressure the composition is the another variable. So, basically here three variables are there. So, then we have to understand the uh, changes of or dependence of the G uh, with respect to the three different variables. So, mostly how G depends on the composition first try to look apart from this thing what it is varying with respect to the temperature and pressure. Now, if you see that at constant pressure then composition and we keep pressure as a fixed, but till composition and temperature are variables for the binary alloy system. And example of the binary alloy system is the two component system for example, that FEC or FEFE3C. So, basically we consider this as a binary solution. Therefore, we will try to discuss a simple model of the binary solution, solid solution using the basic concept of the thermodynamics whatever we learn till now. Now, let us consider binary solution of A and B atoms. Okay. Okay. So, then and we are assuming there is so assumption that uh, that A and B atoms having the similar kind of the crystal structure and even they form the new state may be by mixing A and B, B atoms it creates the solution that solution having also the similar kind of the crystal structure. This is the basic assumptions and second assumption is that A and B can be mixed. Uh, any proportion. So, there, be the, there is no kind of the solubility limit exist between the mixing of A and B. So, that is why it creates after mixing uh, any at any proportion and they will be creating the with the same crystal structure. So, once with this assumption we will try to try to understand that how the in binary solution what is the nature of the Gibbs free energy how it changes. Let us assume that one mole of the homogeneous solid solution that is consisting of the x a mole of a, x a mole of a and x b mole of b such that x a plus x b equal to 1 uh, here x and x b is the mole fraction represents for the uh, atoms a and b in the in this particular alloy system. Now, the mixing when you mixing the atoms a and b this can be the two steps we need to understand distinguish these two steps. First is that we bring together x a of the uh, x a mole of the pure a and x b mole of the pure b. It is associated some calculation or amount of the free energy. So, when you brings together atom a and b together before mixing and second part is that allow a and b and they can mix together and after mixing they create kind of the homogeneous solid solution it they are creating. So, these two steps we are following to further calculation of the Gibbs free energy. So, here we can see that before mixing so x a mole of a and x b mole of b so the bring together. So, it 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 consists of the the free energy x a into g a because x a mole of a exist here uh, and free energy for the uh, atom b that is the x b g b such that total gives free energy before mixing 
g1 equal to x a g a plus x b g b. Now steps 2 after step 1 the free energy of the system we can represent the here also the g1 equal to x a g a plus x b g b the unit can be say assume that joule per mole where g and g b are the molar free energies of the pure a and pure b at temperature and pressure of the above environment. So, one particular temperature and pressure the g and g b represents the free energy associate of the pure a and uh, g b is the molar free energy for the element b. So, therefore, total uh, free energy equal to x a g a plus x b g b. Now, once we mix together then after mixing it follows certain configuration. So, uh, atomic arrangement it can follow uh, specific arrangement of the there are so many possibilities of the ar atomic arrangements is possible when you try to mix the atoms A and B. So, suppose after mixing total free energy can be represented like that G 2 equal to so it is this is state 1 say and this is the st state 2. So, state 2 the Gibbs energy G 2 equal to see what is the Gibbs energy uh, G 1 the initial state 1 plus delta G mix. So, delta G mix indicates the change in the Gibbs free energy because of mixing. Once you mixing there is a change of the Gibbs free energy is represented by the delta G mix. So, therefore, the solid solution free energy of the solid solution is expressed G 2 equal to G 1 plus delta G mix. Now, if we plot the molar free energy is plotted as a function of x a and x b we, we need to understand this thing. So, this is the composition is varying along the x axis and here and free energy free energy per mole uh, before mixing is representing along the y axis. So, suppose G a the is when the completely pure element for the G a pure element a G a indicates the Gibbs energy per mole. Similarly, at point b when there is a here is the 100 percent a and here 100 percent b that means pure element b here also Gibbs energy is G b. Now, when you mixing some intermediate point, so certain ratio, certain percentage of the G or mole fraction of the G A and other uh, remaining mole fraction of the G B, if we mix it, this A and B atoms, say at this particular point, this is the this is the composition for this composition, the this is the G 1 before mixing, the indicates the Gibbs free energy of uh, this atom A and atom B. So, therefore, for all alloy composition G A definitely it should be between the straight line when you at draw the straight line between G A and G B and the G 1 must be on the between the G A and G B on the same straight line because straight line means it is basically linearly varying uh, between G and G B. So, total Gibbs free energy G 1 equal to this. So, G 1 can be represented like that G 1 equal to H 1 minus T S 1. Now, we are trying to link with the state variables that a T and H. So, other variables. So, enthalpy and T. So, G can be represented H minus T S. So, therefore, G 1 equal to H 1 minus T S 1. Similarly, G 2 equal to H 2 minus T S 2. Now, delta G mix can be represented like that. So, what is the after mixing? What because of the mixing? What is the Gibbs free energy change? So, delta G mix is represented delta H minus T into delta S. So, mixing happens at particular temperature T. Now, where delta H mix equal to the difference between these two H 2 minus H 1 two different states and the uh, delta X mix equal to S 2 minus S 1. So, therefore, delta H mix is the heat absorbed or evolved during the step 2 and heat of the solution ignoring the volume changes that means the it indicates the heat of the solution if we ignore there is no change in the uh, volume. So, therefore, that is the representation of the uh, delta H mix. So, either heat absorbed or evolved once we mix the atoms A and B. Now, therefore, expression when we are considering there is no change in the volume. So, therefore, it represents only the difference in the internal energy because H equal to E plus P B enthalpy equal to internal energy plus uh, P V. So, this is this not changing state of the volume there is no volume change at, at constant pressure. So, enthalpy change of the enthalpy is basically equivalent to the change of the internal energy. So, it depends the difference in the internal energy before and after mixing. So, that is the uh, interpretation of the delta H mix. 
and delta x s mix is the difference in the entropy between the mixed and unmixed states. So, between these two states we, we can understand this is the delta x mix between the mixed and unmixed states the change of the entropy. Now, when delta h mix equal to 0, so that means there is no change in the internal energy or uh, with the solution. So, therefore, in that case this kind of the situation arise and we can say this is the kind of the ideal, so as uh, ideal solution. So, therefore, in case of the ideal solution whatever free energy change is only because of the change of the entropy. So, we are assuming for ideal solution delta h equal to mix equal to 0 with this assumptions we say that whatever change in the uh, gift free energy that is because of the change in the uh, delta change in the entropy only. So, therefore, delta g mix can be represented t into delta s mix. Now, in statistical thermodynamics entropy is quantitatively calculated uh, with the representation of the entropy is the randomness and therefore, by Boltzmann's equation we can represent the s equal to k into ln logarithm of omega. Omega is the k is the Boltzmann's constant and omega is the measure of the randomness. So, some way we can measure the randomness the omega. So, this is the representation of the entropy according to the statistical thermodynamics. Now, there are two contribution to the entropy of a solute solution. So, entropy we can say that entropy is a measure of the randomness, but we can further uh, consider the uh, entropy in the two different component. One is the thermal contribution one part and the second part is the configurational contribution. Configurational contribution, so entropy we can say that entropy is the one is the thermal contribution, another is the con configuration contribution such that in case of the thermal entropy Therefore, omega is the number of ways in which the thermal energy of the solid can be divided among the atoms. So, what we can represent the ways the thermal energy can be divided between the atoms that is the representation of the thermal entropy. In other way, total number of ways the, the in which the vibration of the atoms can be represented or set up in the solid. What are the different ways we can represent the vibration of the atoms within the solid phase? So, that is the measure of the thermal entropy and uh, uh, maybe uh, okay, thermal entropy. Now, in case of the solid solution there is a additional entropy presence because what a different configuration that means what way the arrangement of the atoms can be done or can form. There are so many different so that atoms can be arranged after mixing. So, therefore, this actually gives the configurational entropy. So, therefore, the but representation of the uh, configurational entropy is like that. What are the number of distinguishable ways such that arrange uh, atoms can be arranged in the solution? So, what what number of ways the atoms are arranged in the particular solution? So, therefore, we can see that if there is no volume change or no heat exchange during the mixing process, the only contribution to the so we can neglect the thermal entropy part. So, in that case we can consider only the configurational entropy delta S mix is equivalent to the configurational entropy. So, therefore, if you try to understand the configurational entropy, so here we can see that before mixing that atoms A and B they are hold together separately. If you remember what we have seen that before mixing they are held together. So, only atoms are arranged one way only before mixing. But after mixing the atoms can be arranged there are so many different ways. So, here you can see that. So, therefore, before mixing we can simply quantify like that omega equal to 1. So, that atoms can be arranged only one particular configuration. So, once omega equal to 1 therefore, S 1 equal to k into ln omega. So, here omega equal to 1. So, therefore, that is equal to 0 that means delta S mix uh, S2 minus S1, but S1 equal to 0 here. So, delta S mix equal to uh, that is equivalent to only the configurational entropy in the phase 2 that means after mixing. Now, uh, if we consider uh, this mixing that is the in substitutional solid solution, then what are the different ways or uh, A and B atoms can be configured. So, therefore, all configuration of the A and B atoms we are assuming the 
equal probable. So, that means equal probability we are considering the equal opportunity we are considering when you try to mix A and B, B atoms and their configurational entropy is happening in this particular case. So, therefore, number of different ways of arranging of the atoms on particular site is represented like that. So, therefore, omega configuration can be represented like that N A plus N B factorial uh, N A factorial into N B factorial. This is the expression for the configurational entropy that means, what way distinguish way we can arrange the atoms. So, here N A is the number of A atoms, N B is the number of B atoms and one mole solution N A can be represented like that X A into N A small a here and N B equal to X B into N A again N A here, but here N A represents the uh, Avogadro's number. So, basically number of atoms that following the Avogadro's number. Now, uh, X and X B is the um, mole fraction associated for the atoms A and B. Now, Stirling approximation is there. So, here we can see that uh, logarithm of n factorial n is equal to n ln n minus n. So, these are the approximation. So, and other way we can see that n a into k, k is the Boltzmann's constant that is equivalent to the r universal gas constant. So, with using this uh, configuration, so within all this expression, we will try to estimate uh, what uh, how we can calculate the uh, configurational entropy in the phase 2 that means after mixing of the A and B atoms that we will discuss in the uh, next, uh, next class. So, for the time being uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.